Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos are two of the richest men on the planet, but it seems the planet isn't big enough for their wealth and egos, which is why the stars have become their playground for some time now. They've used their achievements in rocket tech to compete with one another. And so far, Elon and SpaceX have attained numerous milestones, while Bezos and his beloved company Blue Origin have become somewhat outdated and slow in their development. However, even after chasing SpaceX for nearly a decade, Blue Origin's not given up. Bezos still harbors a desire to be like Elon SpaceX and perhaps even pass him up. Bezos hasn't directly expressed this ambition, but Blue Origin's actions clearly demonstrate this desire. So late last year, Blue Origin made a major change in the company's executive leadership. They switched out the CEO. Bezos finally removed Bob Smith, who dedicated six years to Blue Origin, and replaced him with Dave Limp, who previously served as the vice president for Amazon. From this point, we can see a clear acceleration in Blue Origin's rocket testing and manufacturing. Since the beginning of 2024, there have been numerous insane updates from Dave Limp, who frequently posts images of Blue Origin's projects, such as the Lunar Lander being built under NASA's contract, the latest images inside their engine and New Glenn rocket manufacturing facility, plus more. Additionally, launch pad tests and engine ignitions have also been made public. Most notably, Blue Origin recently announced a milestone test with the New Glenn rocket. We recently completed New Glenn's first stage test of its six landing legs, a key area for reusability, which lowers the cost of access to space. The landing gear is stowed inside the rocket during flight, deploying as the booster gently touches down on our landing vessel at sea. While the progress may seem slow, at least they've openly shown us how these new details are working. The landing legs of the rocket's first stage have revealed a method for landing the rocket back on the planet, a significant technological development for the reusability of launch vehicles. This might seem a bit ambitious for Blue Origin, as they've yet to send a rocket into orbit, let alone launch an orbital rocket with a returning first stage. Therefore, this test is just a preparatory step for the third or fourth flight of New Glenn. Their scheduled flight for later this year will certainly not perform this landing process. The six landing legs of the New Glenn rocket are uniquely stowed inside its body and will stay there during flight. Upon landing, these legs would deploy before it touches down on the landing vessel in the ocean. However, and objectively speaking, the vibration intensity of the landing legs is not well controlled, and the overall structure seems somewhat fragile and lacks robustness. It's unclear whether this system will be directly used or if it's just part of a prototype simulation of the New Glenn rocket that was unveiled on the launch pad in February. Either way, the idea seems to draw inspiration from SpaceX's Falcon 9. However, there are some significant differences. Compared to the Falcon 9, which only uses three landing legs that are detached from the body, making them more flexible, New Glenn's design is different. Prior to this process, on August 2nd, Blue Origin moved a rocket booster simulator to Port Canaveral, likely for testing with the 375-foot-tall giant crane responsible for supporting the first stages of New Glenn after they get unloaded from the landing vessel. The company aims to use the first stage for up to 25 missions. It's exciting to see the New Glenn and Falcon 9 possibly standing next to each other in the same frame, an image we've waited for quite some time to see. Do you find this interesting? By the way, we also have info about ULA's rocket ship that'll arrive at Port Canaveral Saturday evening to deliver the Vulcan from the factory. This means we're going to have a reunion photo of three rockets from the top space providers in the U.S. Hey, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel if you're enjoying this video. All right. Although New Glenn, when fully assembled, will appear slightly bigger than Falcon 9, New Glenn is a two-stage orbital rocket standing at 322 feet tall, capable of lifting 50 tons into LEO. That's about twice the payload capacity of the Falcon 9. New Glenn also has a standout feature compared to the competition. Its payload fairings big enough to fit three school buses, according to the company. This is due to the nearly 23-foot diameter of its payload fairing, compared to the approximately 17 to 18-foot diameter of Falcon 9, Falcon Heavy, and Vulcan Centaur. The rocket is quite promising, but what many people are curious about is the productivity of Blue Origin's BE-4 engines. With past delays in delivering BE-4 rocket engines to ULA, many believe that even if Blue Origin successfully test its rocket model, it might not be able to produce enough BE-4 engines in time. New Glenn requires seven BE-4 engines for the first stage. Vulcan needs two.
However, the reality shows that their engine production process is making progress. In recent months, locals in the Huntsville area, home to NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center, have reported an increase in rocket engine tests from the area. NASA and Blue Origin signed a Commercial Space Launch Act agreement in 2019, under which the company would refurbish the historic test stand 4670 for use with its BE-3U and BE-4U engines. The increase in testing marks a turnaround from the company's previous state. At the beginning of July, ULA's president and CEO, Tori Bruno, announced that Blue Origin had delivered enough engines for the next three Vulcan launches scheduled for 2024 and had now shifted to producing New Glenn engines. For New Glenn, the engines can generate 3.9 million pounds of thrust at liftoff and will burn blue when using liquefied natural gas, LNG, mixed with liquid oxygen. Blue Origin has dozens of launches under contract, including NASA's Escapade mission to study solar wind energy around Mars. Launches supporting future crewed Artemis missions, flights for satellite communication companies like Telesat and Utelsat, and up to 27 launches in the coming years to support Bezos Amazon and its Project Kuiper program. Last month, the company also joined SpaceX and ULA as one of the three providers in the National Security Space Launch Phase 3 Lane 1 procurement program, which will allocate launch contracts over the next five years worth up to $5.6 billion. Blue Origin is very focused on its own development, but they're also closely monitoring the progress of Elon's SpaceX. Why? To learn, yes, but also to curb that development. In June, Blue Origin submitted a public comment to the FAA asking the regulatory body to limit the number of SpaceX Starship launches. This is a tactic Blue Origin has used before to try and overwhelm SpaceX. We can see Blue Origin's ambition to win, but no one agrees with Bezos' approach. Being less developed, years behind, then using illegal measures to prevent competitors from progressing is not a fair play. But it also proves one thing. Blue Origin is afraid of SpaceX. Or their rocket might have some unresolved issues, too, which is why they feel the need to bring SpaceX down like this. Blue Origin officials are quite confident in announcing the first launch of New Glenn in 2024, but there are still doubts about this schedule. Although public comment submitted by Blue Origin has no legal value, the FAA is going to consider it when deciding which restrictions to apply to Starship at Kennedy. However, it's not just Blue Origin. ULA also made similar requests. This ultimately shows shows that SpaceX is facing haters out there with other companies who want to try and stop their rapid development. Additionally, while ULA SIL has not yet been publicly confirmed, I can ascertain that Blue Origin is the buyer. So, can all of Blue Origin's tricks beat out SpaceX? Honestly, Blue Origin is lagging way behind SpaceX. Why is that? The vertical landing technology with landing legs is something SpaceX pioneered nearly a decade ago. Their first successful landing on a landing zone occurred in December 2015, followed by the first drone ship landing in April 2016. Blue Origin is truly a decade behind its competitor. Additionally, there's still no evidence that their system will perform well on official flights. Even if their system gets operational, matching the impressive landing and reuse record of Falcon rockets is going to be difficult. While Blue Origin's still grappling with landing legs, SpaceX has demonstrated its superiority by eliminating them altogether on their rockets. Yes, I'm talking Talking about Starship, SpaceX is now employing a system that no other organization has deployed before the Mechazilla arms. These arms will lift and stack the giant rocket and, in the future, catch it upon return. This system, along with the orbital launch mount, allows SpaceX to do away with landing legs once considered indispensable. Although I am a fan of Starship with the landing legs, I can't deny SpaceX's technological edge in taking this component away. In terms of progress, even without comparing it to the Falcon rockets, where the difference is substantial, New Glenn still lags behind Starship, which is also under development. So far, SpaceX has conducted four integrated flights and achieved major milestones. Most notably, the latest flight saw SpaceX successfully land both stages of the rocket for the first time. Achieving a similar milestone could require considerable effort from New Glenn. And regarding future competition, while some might worry that Blue Origin acquires ULA, it could pose a threat to SpaceX. But in my view, even with such a merger, Blue Origin's still going to struggle to catch up to SpaceX. ULA is indeed a major player in the industry, but merging with them won't be easy. Their older generation rockets are getting phased out one by one and likely aren't going to contribute much to Blue Origin. The company's new rocket Vulcan is still struggling to get launch certification from the USSF. Furthermore, in the military and government payload launch market, which is ULA's strong suit, SpaceX is surpassing and gradually outpacing them. 
Therefore, a merger with ULA is unlikely to really change up the landscape and competition. Nonetheless, the progress in New Glenn is a positive sign for the United States. After numerous delays, it might finally be time for New Glenn to awaken and meet its aerospace industry's expectations. For Blue Origin, after 24 years of development, it's time to shed the embarrassment of not getting into orbit. They need to join the race as a major competitor, sharing the burden with SpaceX in the global competition, especially against these other countries like China. For SpaceX, after years of total dominance, they might need a competitor to make things a little more exciting. This competition will help them continue to improve and break new records. Both companies play major roles in NASA's journey back to the moon. SpaceX's Starship's planned for Artemis 3 and 4, while New Glenn's scheduled for Artemis 5. Both are shouldering big-time responsibilities. Okay, for now, I hope Blue Origin focuses on accelerating their progress rather than getting bogged down in these lawsuits as they have lately. And that's all for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.